My whole purpose is to empower other people to live without limits and to really conquer their health conditions, their disease, and not be defined by it. Today, we are doing a little blast to the past. Today, I'm sharing some great information that I did a while ago, and it was just too good not to share with the Living Beyond With Hope community. So sit back and get ready to dig in and hear some great information. You are listening to Living Beyond With Hope. Hey, that's me. Welcome to the podcast. This podcast is meant to help you realize you're more than a label and you too can create a life you love despite it. Each week, we bring you tips and inspiring messages to help you take the positive steps in your health that will allow you to live beyond. Now sit back, relax, meal prep, or take a walk as you dig into today's topic with your host, a gal living her life to the fullest with type 1 diabetes, Hope Mangifico. So what we're talking about today is the five healthy foods that are easy to love, and they might surprise you, but I promise you I'll give you some ideas and tips on how you can love them and why it's not that hard to love them. So thanks so much for sticking through some of those awkward moments I had in the beginning. And I hope you find this helpful. And remember, you can give hearts as well. And I'll do a quick intro. My name is Hope. I have type 1 diabetes and my whole purpose is to empower other people to live without limits and to really conquer their health conditions, their disease, and not be defined by it. And one way to do that is through diet. And what I've done is with my type 1 diabetes, I've learned how to be so much greater than it. And doing that in a certain way with my nutrition and exercising. And I have minimized the amount of insulin I need and I feel great and I just wanna share my answers with you. So let's go. I'm gonna tell you the five foods, kind of explain the benefits and why they're great options for you and how you can incorporate them into your diet. So number one, and they're not in any order, so don't like prioritize these based off what I said. Just start incorporating them. That's what's most important. So number one is cauliflower. Recently, I was noticing on social media that people were starting to talk about cauliflower rice. It's kind of like blowing up. And like, I totally get it. I literally eat it multiple times a week. My husband takes it for lunch all day, every day for the past like four months. No joke. He hasn't skipped a lunch without it. He makes like a Mexican rice bowl and it's pretty rad. But there's so much more that can be done with cauliflower and a lot of people have a tendency to want to write it off because they're like, there is no way this vegetable can taste like a starchy carb like rice or like potatoes. And I'm here to tell you, cauliflower is like a superfood. In our household, we treat it like a superfood. So what you can do is easily incorporate it by buying some fresh or frozen, throwing it, steaming it, or making it on the stovetop. There's many options on how you can prepare it, but literally all you gotta do is like steam it and you can put it in a blender or a food processor and pulse it and you got rice. You blend it for a little bit longer, you can have mashed potatoes. Or if you wanna get fancy, I share some other recipes related to how to incorporate cauliflower in your life. And I share that in my diabetes detox where you can make the most amazing pizza crust. And I'll tell you, you can find some pizza crust recipes because I probably made my first cauliflower pizza crust four or five years ago, but nothing beats this one in particular. Not a thing. So you can transform your health by incorporating cauliflower, and I promise you, you can love it, and it can easily replace your tasty carbs that you feel like you may not be able to live without. All right, and number two is one of these things that fall into my best practice of low carb, high fat. We just blend it raw and eat instead of rice. Yeah, that's perfect. And a lot of people like it raw because it's crunchy. And so you can steam it and make it soft or you, which I would prefer to eat it raw too. So that's exactly right. I like it, it's perfect. Number two is another food that I eat every single day and I think most people like this, but I don't know if people realize how important and valuable it is to your health and your diet, and that is avocados. 
I put avocados on my breakfast. I eat it for lunch. We put it on whatever we're having for dinner. It is phenomenal. And what's even more cool about it is that if you want to look for other recipes and you're like, oh, that's cool, like I like guacamole, I like it on my cauliflower rice, making a Mexican kind of dish, you can make it into something sweet as well. Believe it or not, and they actually tasted good. Like, no joke. I have made avocado ice cream, I have made avocado brownies, I have made avocado cookies, and they are the foundation of the food. And what's really cool is once you throw in the cocoa powder and the sweeteners, you get this superfood thrown into it and you don't even realize it. And so if the green weirds you out or what have you, granted, it might stay a little green depending on if you add cocoa powder or not, but all in all, it's kind of hidden and it is so good. What's really cool about avocado, and you know I gotta hit upon this because we have diabetes and it has carbs. A whole avocado has about 16 grams of carbohydrates, but it has about 16 grams of carbs and about 12 or 13 grams of that is fiber. So it's full of fiber, it's full of great carbs that will not mess up your blood sugar, and it's freaking amazingly filled with fats. And you know, we all about that fat in this life. So you can, yes, try it. Try the ice cream, it's pretty easy. And if you're like me, I like to get really creative with things. I don't really like to stick with like what I find online. But if you Google avocado ice cream, you can try a few, see what you think. Some are not gonna be as hidden. You're gonna definitely taste the avocado. I kinda wing it, but you might want some extra guidance. I don't have like a go-to avocado ice cream recipe or I would share it, but don't worry because I will bring up another ice cream option here in the next few foods, all right? So number three is squash. And when I say squash, I'm referring to like all squashes all squash. I don't know if it's plural with the ES, I think so. So squash is really cool. And when I think of squash, typically I would think of like yellow squash. And it's like, oh, that's so boring. Like that's all I can eat. That's pretty bland. But there's so much more than that. So squash, if you've ever like been to the store, especially in fall, there's so many out there. And you have to be willing to try them. There are such amazing options for low carb alternatives to your favorite foods. Yeah, so like butternut squash, I don't eat as often because it has a little bit more carbohydrates. Actually, a lot of squash can have a little bit more carbohydrates, but for alternatives to what you typically could eat, you can totally rock these squashes and it'll make you feel good and that's what's most important. So like for butternut squashes, you can make fries out of it. I've actually done that before. I made like loaded fries out of butternut squash. You can make spaghetti squash instead of spaghetti. You can make, oh my favorite, zucchini fries. Literally, that is our favorite recipe. And it is so good, so good. You can make zucchini noodles. You can get your veggies, whether it's raw, you steam it a little bit, you cook it a little bit, you bake it. You can use squash for just about anything and you can make it taste how you want. And what's cool too is there's so many out there. And so like acorn squash, for example, it's kind of sweet. It has carbs, but again, it's a better alternative. And it, I love the taste of acorn squash and mixing it with kind of like a Mexican dish and adding like turkeys and sauce and things like that. Zucchini noodles, yeah, try it, it's so good. And it's not that hard. You can get an inexpensive spiralizer <laughs> online or at the store and it's so affordable, so easy. And if you like raw cauliflower, you probably would like your zoodles not cooked very much. So yeah, that kind of hit upon all the squashes. All right, so number one, we'll do a quick summary of the first half. Number one was cauliflower and I told you how to use it. Number two, good old avocados and gave you some recipe ideas that you can research. Number three are different squashes. Number four, and got actually, I'm gonna change the order. Number four is gonna go back into ice cream, okay? So we talked about avocado and being able to sneak in it as ice cream and you get kind of this creamy consistency and it's really good. But this is my favorite, okay? 
and it's a super, super awesome food and it's gonna lead me into number five and it's something you may not have tried before and you might not have tried it because you didn't know what to do with it. You saw it at the grocery store, you're like, what is that, why is this here, whatever. So number four is canned coconut milk. It is one of these things that I honestly never knew what to do with and obviously I incorporate coconut in my life like crazy because it's allowed me to stabilize my blood sugar, feel great, but coconut milk, canned coconut milk, regular coconut milk is awesome too, but canned coconut milk is where it's at. With that, you can make so many sweet goods that will actually support your health in so many amazing ways and you can do ice cream and it's kind of cold you know sometimes if it's winter you're like not really feeling ice cream but you can make the best ice cream out of it and there are actually recipes that you can find that incorporate it a lot more than you realize i just made two recipes this week that are called for it and it starts to kind of like sneak into your recipes if you like to cook and what's really cool is like when you're making ice cream, you can use the whole can. So you can use the full fat part that gets kind of hard when it's in the fridge, or you can also use the coconut water in another recipe. And all of that is so great. And again, filled with great high fat and minimal carbohydrates. So that's one that it's not a vegetable. Most of these are kind of like veggies or along the lines of fruits and veggies. But that one in particular is kind of a challenge for you to maybe try it because it's so different. For me, you find it like at the store in like Asian section, pretty much, that's where it usually is. And you just try the ice cream first and you can buy an ice cream maker off Amazon. If you go to myhopefulhealth.com, I have like a resource tab that'll tell you the one that I use from Amazon. It's awesome and it makes making ice cream amazing and it doesn't mess up your blood sugar. Okay, number five, and I recently saw, like literally just today, I saw an article on Facebook about the magic of, drum roll, coconut oil, oh my God. Coconut oil, I guess, isn't exactly a food, but I put it in all my foods, so I'm gonna call it a food, and I had to bring this one up because today, when this article was shared in this group, people's minds were blown. And if you know me, you know I've been advocating for coconut oil for forever. The article that was shared was about, and this was so cool, because this was shared not in a diabetes group, it wasn't anything like, I don't know, it was in a health-related group, but it wasn't diabetes-related, but it talked about coconut oil, how amazing it is for your overall health, for your body weight, if you're trying to lose fat, and it talked about for blood sugar stabilization. What? Like, I know fat is really good for blood sugar stabilization, but I never really, like, told people specifically that, like, that alone helps with blood sugars, and now that showed, and it wasn't, like, a bunch of research or anything, but I thought it was so cool because it backed why I do what I do, why I encourage you to do it for if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to get your cholesterol levels, you know, in control, if you're trying to get blood sugars under control, if you're just trying to feel good. Like, I have a program that you can find on myhopefulhealth.com under the Diabetes Academy, and it's called Healthy, Sexy, Strong. And literally, it's my step-by-step -step process of how I've gotten to where I am, how I basically live a normal life with type 1 diabetes. And the first thing that I do is do a coconut oil challenge. I challenge people to consume more coconut oil because so many people don't understand how to do it. They're like, how do you eat so much oil? Like, what? how is that possible? It sounds so gross, like spooning it out. Like, do you really do that? No, you can incorporate it in so many delicious ways. Just a few are adding it to your vegetables. And side note, if you're going to start incorporating coconut oil, which I challenge you to do, you don't have to get the unrefined kind. That's the kind that tastes really coconutty. And while most people go for the unrefined, I actually buy the refined, but only one brand of it. So I can put it in and on everything. I make sweet goods with the unrefined sometimes, but all in all, the refined is where it's at but only one, and it's by Nativia. And you can find that 
on Amazon. And again, if you go to my resource tab at my hopeful health, H-E-A-L-T-H dot com and under exercise and nutrition resources, it'll take you to Amazon and you can see which kind I'm talking about because it's rad and it's amazing. And you can put it on vegetable oils. You can bake with it. You can cook with it, put it in your coffee. It's good stuff. And the moment you start consuming more of this superfood is legitimately considered a superfood. Like by the books, it's a superfood. You will feel better and you will never want to go back. I literally consume so much coconut oil each day. I'm so satisfied. I'm like never hungry. My food is delicious. And you can start incorporating it today. It's really easy. So that's it. Those are the five. And they're nothing crazy. Some are specific. Some you know if you've been following me that I'm a big advocate for. But we'll go back through really quick. Number one, cauliflower. Number two, avocados. Number three, coconut milk. Number four is squash. And number five is coconut oil. These are things that I incorporate on a weekly, if not daily basis to control my health. And they work. And you can sneak them in. And that's kind of what like, I claim I'm an expert at is sneaking this kind of stuff in. So if you have a child that's like, I want my chicken nuggets and I want my pancakes and I want my chocolate, you can sneak it in there. It's pretty cool. If you follow me for very long, Thursdays, I typically do exercise challenges and that's my backdrop. And I'm working on a really cool exercise project where this is like my studio. Really excited for it. It took a lot of work, but you know, it's all right. So those are the five healthy foods that you might've been surprised about that can be easy to enjoy and love. It's that easy. Another side note, what I like to teach and what I do here is for so many people besides people living with diabetes. And obviously I focus on diabetes, but it's great for everyone. And if you're like thinking this is really helpful and maybe it's something you could start incorporating, be sure to like check out my website and learn more about me and what I do at my hopeful health, H-E-A-L-T-H dot com. And just look around, look at the blog and read and just see if there's anything I can help you with. And if nutrition is kind of an area that you struggle with, like that's my specialty. And if you look at the Diabetes Academy, you can see a lot of what I would consider amazing nutrition resources that will really help you. So that's it. Hey, you still there? Thanks so much for hanging out just a little bit longer. I greatly appreciate it. If you found this episode helpful or even a little bit life-changing, it would mean the world to me to have a review in iTunes. A review in iTunes just lets me know that I am actually providing you with the correct guidance and mentorship that you need to live beyond your label and to be confident in who you are. This episode was also brought to you by my next step guide in embracing your label with confidence, which is called Choose to Live. In Choose to Live, there is a checklist of what to ask your doctors. There's an audiobook. So if you like podcasts, an audiobook filled with affirmations to remind you of who you truly are, what you're really made of, as well as some really like homework and checklist and um, guidance for, for your family members so that they can support you along the way. This episode was about community, and you cannot do this journey alone. So if you're interested in learning more about Choose to Live, just visit www.icanlivebeyond.com, and you can find that in the show notes as well at livingbeyondwithhope.com. And otherwise, I will see you on the next episode.